introduce the real top G, which is not Michael Jordan. It's his mother. She opened up a multi-billion dollar industry for athletes right after that. They thought he was going to sell $3 million of shoes at best. <laughs> they end up selling his rookie year $126 million of shoes. He says, the biggest thing I did in terms of that shoe deal was me on that court. This next reaction video is on Rihanna and Michael Jordan. And what do they have in common? Let's take a look at this. Rihanna is rich as this lady knows how to structure a deal. 2017, Fenty Beauty launches. It's now worth $2.8 billion, and she owns 50% of the company overall. My friend Alex Lieberman did this incredible comparison with Michael Jordan to show you just how smart Rihanna really is. Since 1984, Michael Jordan has pocketed 5% of all Jordan sales. In 2022, Jordan did $5.1 billion in revenue, earning him $256.1 million. But imagine if he had Rihanna's take. This would be worth tens of billions of dollars. You know the word, equity. Here's three things I get from this. Number one, there's short-term thinking versus long-term thinking. Number two, there's the real top G, which is not Michael Jordan. It's his mother, Dolores Jordan. And number three, killers in their own industry. They're not just some scrub athletes. They're not just some scrub artists. No, they're killers in their industry. So what do I mean by short-term versus long-term? The short-term deal was, you know what? Let me not think about equity. Let me think about ownership because that's for the big boys, right? right? That's for the people that own this stuff. But let me maximize my contract with them and let me get as much upfront money and hopefully it'll last. I mean, let me get a big salary and that's it. So we've, we've seen that in our careers. Starting mm -hmm. on business, your, your short-term setback was leaving training for a gym mm -hmm. versus venturing off on your own. In spring, you see this on a daily basis as you're building and recruiting your organization looking for talent to take your business to the next level. What's your thoughts on short-term versus long-term thinking as it relates to what we just saw there with Rihanna and MJ? Jordan was also like groundbreaking for the way that he even requested that That's because right. at that time, nobody right. was doing nobody that doing at all. You know, no. that was not even yeah. like, like heard of, you no. know, so good for him still. Like he created a model for a Rihanna to be able, he paid the way. a customized shoe built around the athlete. And to have a percentage of it. Yeah. That was not not in the conversation at all. So he changed the way that shoe deals forever came. So I have to give that up for him, right? Because he's still the goat. I gotta say that. But <laughs> so actually, but I, I, I would mm -hmm. I would say Spring, his mother was the goat. Yeah, you're right. You're because, right. Because because uh, if it wasn't for his mom to even bring it up, yeah. Because she was like, if you watch the movie Air, we un we unpack the movie Air, right? Mm -hmm. The real salesperson in that whole movie, his mom, was his mom. That's right. Yes. She was like always shout doing out to mamas, man. Her tech, her technique was a takeaway. Yeah. Take away. Listen, you got to work. Hey, hey, Sonny, Nike, you guys got to work for my son. Mm -hmm. He's about to work for Converse. He's about to sign with Adidas. Yeah. He's listening to all the Adidas. Work for it, but I'll, I'll listen to you. So she was a great salesperson. But Michael Jordan signed this deal, and she opened up a multi-billion-dollar industry for athletes right after that. Yeah. And so other guys signed deals, but nothing to the point where. It create a multi-billion dollar deal. Now, I will say, though, Michael Jordan is the goal because if Michael Jordan was just an average player, Air Jordan would be nothing. Exactly. You know, he said something during the, the last, docu last documentary. He says, the biggest thing I did in terms of that shoe deal was me on that court. Yes. Because if I don't perform on the court, this deal doesn't... I mean, he, they, they thought he was going to sell $3 million of shoes at best. <laughs> they end up selling his rookie year $126 million of shoes. Right. <laughs> People were blown away. Yeah. What? What did this guy do in his rookie year? Continue. Yes. No. Yep. So that and that that's amazing. And you, and I love that that's the part that you talked about too is yeah. like the fact that he had to lead yeah. in his position to be able to get there yeah. to to make it whatever it was. The yeah. the contract was the contract, but it had no value. And that leads me to the conversation of the small thinking in versus big mm. thinking is because um sometimes I think that like small thinkers they will forfeit their future for what's comfortable today. Yeah. They'll forfeit what can happen for them long term because they're so like, especially in today's like microwave society of yeah. social media yeah. and all these things and everything is very instant gratification. Yep. And it's like, oh, I started my business. I'm not a millionaire, a billionaire. Mm -hmm. In the first three months, I'm ditching it. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas yeah. you have to understand the leading, the work that it takes, the things that you have to do, the inward work. Right. Like you talked yeah. about the inward work yeah. that you have to do to be able to uh, get that outward result. And so, um, you know, having a, a big thinking is usually always a little bit more long term. Milton, your thoughts on this? 
Uh, picking up back on what she said, I, I'm, I'm a big believer that long-term thinking is very vision-driven. Mm-hmm. Being able to see the end in uh, the end in mind, being able to see the end, and then starting from there, and then coming back to the beginning and starting from that specific point. Yeah. A lot of people don't want to put in the work in order to be able to get to that bigger vision of what they want. I'll be honest with you. When I first started my business, I just said, you know what? I want to make X amount of money. I want to make enough to pay off my bills, save a little money, and I just want to train, and I'm done. That's it. I just I want to be comfortable. I don't care about doing anything big. I don't care about going places. I don't care about anything. I just want to pay my bills. But I felt such a void inside because I know there was something more for me to be able to do to be able to impact people. I think it, more than just being able to make money, whatever we do in life, whether it's in, in life insurance industry, fitness industry, medical industry, whatever the case may be, I think that people are put here to be able to do something grander. And mm-hmm. I think I, I feel like you're, you're selling yourself short by st- sticking to the short thinking concept and just literally nesting there versus allowing yourself to be uncomfortable, putting yourself in situations, in environments around people who are forcing you to become a long, you know, a long-term thinker, which that within itself isn't only going to be centered around you, but it's going to be centered around helping other people. And I think the whole purpose of us is to be able to help other people versus being able to just help ourselves. Right. Yeah. Can I piggyback on yeah. that really quick? Yeah. Um, because you may, you sparked a thought for myself and it may sound a little contradictory to what I originally said, um, which is thinking big. But sometimes I think that when we think so big we paralyze ourselves into not doing anything so like paralysis by analysis exactly it's totally, never so get there. Yeah. so i think there's just another caveat to that which is think big act small so it's like you got to think big but you got to take one step first mm-hmm. you know it's like you look at the mountain and you're like i got to get up there yeah. but it's like you got to take a small step first right. like, to be able to get to the bigger achievements so right. if you're able to to take a lot of small steps forward then but you keep your big vision in sight then 100%. that's where you get where you're trying to go Just chop this tree one swing at a time. Exactly. Yep. You know, and what do we say in business? If you guys want this big goal, everybody's do, got to do their part in their small goals along along the way. Exactly. That's uh, that's uh, you know, I, I love this with uh, with with his mom, the relationship he has with his mom, mm-hmm. and how she really had vision in doing this. So again, make sure you're around big thinkers. <laughs> uh, the, the reason why I'm at or I'm at my life is because I stand on the shoulders of giants. When you when you have a CEO named Patrick Bay David and he constantly pushes you and challenges you and recreates you and has you has has you think differently. I mean, how many times has PBD mentioned something? You're like, oh, it's right there. I didn't think about it. Yeah. Right. All, all the time. Yeah. It's like it's like right there. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.